I don't know about you, but I can't believe it. We've made it to the end of the season. Yes. <laughs> We've made it to the end of the season. Let's pa- let's unpack it all right now on After the Arc. Hello and welcome to After the Arc, the official after show for The Arc. I am Yel Teagle. And I'm Adrian Snow. Adrian, this is the season finale. This is the season finale. This is how everything goes down. Well, let's start with uh, The Cure. We find out that Bryce, we are correct, too hot to die. Too hot to die. Too He's... hot to die. Uh, he is cured. Yes. Um, well, not yet. So we discover the cure didn't work because of right. the artificial oxygen. Yes. And the only way for him to be cured is to be bitten by the spider. And we discover that Bryce is afraid of spiders. So he's on your side. Because spiders are creepy and gross. They are pretty delicate and vicious. Yes. That's why I like spiders. Then we get to see Maddox get the cure as well. Yeah. I absolutely love this character yeah she is understandable Mm -hmm. so she comes on and makes a deal she will bring us um lane lane if they give her the cure if they give her the cure yeah and originally she was just going to backstab them and lane talked her out of it It he's like don't go on like if you honor what garnet is asking she will actually give you what you need she's a very good person in that way and so and i loved having that moment because i meet lane semi-redeemable in my eyes that he you know was defending Garnet and being like no if you're just honest and truthful she will do right by you I'm like listen to your own words baby like in the future (laughs) I I Lane redeemed himself Mm -hmm. for me not when he left uh, when he was left behind to help them escape Mm -hmm. on the shuttle but when he took that crowbar to the um FTL retrofit. Yeah. That I was like, there you go. Finally doing the right thing I for know. our team. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so he and Maddox come onto the ship mm-hmm. and Kelly sneaks on. Kelly, full fatal attraction. Uh, like yes. has to come back and and make her point with Angus. Just let him be. Just let him be. She warned him that if he betrayed her, <laughs> you know. Listen, I've been in therapy. I feel like I have to go to therapy. I think they the only therapist learns. they have is Kat. That's true. Well, so Kelly goes after Angus. Yep. Um, and Alicia, Alicia saves him. And at first I was like, wait, I don't understand blunt force trauma. Did she just kill her? Like, she's in a coma. She's in a coma. And then we get that other moment between Alicia and Angus where they're both like, I can't believe my first kiss was with a murderer. Mine too. <laughs> Guess we'll just have to make our second kisses that much more memorable. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I really don't wanna. Oh, just do it now. <laughs> yes, I'm into the ship. Yeah. I support it. Yes. I will watch the ship. Uh, a float. Yes, because Bryce and Eva had a great moment of like, she's like, are you afraid of spiders? And, and it was like, they got to be really cute and adorable as well. And yet at the end of the episode, we do not know if Eva or Angus are alive. I know. So. We'll see. We will see. Yeah. Um. So I love that Maddox honors the deal. Mm-hmm. She honors the arrangement and she says that we can share this planet if trust can get it spinning. Yeah. We will share it, but we will never be friends. Yeah. She when she go when they're when they were first talking about negotiating the spider for Lane and stuff, and uh Garnet calls her Evelyn and she mm. goes, Mrs. Maddox. And I'm like, Yes. <laughs> like I mean like rude, but yes. You should. Had boundaries. I mean, <laughs> I will say, Lane calls Garnett Sharon all the time, mm-hmm. and it really bothers me. Yeah, because nobody else calls her Sharon. It is a sign of disrespect. It is. Do you call me by my last name? Okay. I think we call everyone on the show by their last name. There's some people I'm like, do I even remember what their first name is? No. No. <laughs> like, uh-uh. There was also this moment between Lane and Garnet when 
he's back on the ship Mm -hmm. and they hug and I was like and this is why I kind of feel like maybe they're they might be pushing them towards a romance because they like hugged and then kind of looked at each other then kind of looked away bashfully I these two are brother and sister I don't know they are brother and sister competing for mommy and daddy's love I don't know no I know we should also talk about trust yet again being free on the ship they decide to do it because he says that he's going to get the the planet spinning. But, and then he betrays everyone. Immediately. Shock of all shocks. Shock of all shocks. He essentially sets up the magnet so it's facing Arc 15, so it'll drag it down to the planet's atmosphere. And if they try to save them, they'll be dragged down as well. And yet, our team, who has too much faith in other people, they go after Arc 15. Yeah. I love this moment Mm -hmm. because it really, it does solidify that although our team is sometimes naive and trust people, they Mm -hmm. shouldn't, they also are just genuinely good, kind-hearted people. Yeah. You think like all the good people were on arc one and (laughs) everyone else on earth is just like, meh. So the planet blows up. Yeah. It's a bomb. It's a bomb. (laughs) But we end the season with our friend... On Arc 15, yeah, sending shuttles to help. Maddox is a good person. That's why I've stood by her. She's a child abuser, but she's a good person outside of the fact that she doesn't treat her child well. Right. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. She's a, she's a complicated person. I shouldn't she's, say a good person. But she is, she is never... Um, She's an honest person. She's an honest person. In that she's always been who she is. And yeah. she's always shown who she is. Yeah. And I do like that and respect that. Let's let's do it. Okay. What are your big wow moments of this episode? Uh, I really loved Angus and Alicia having that heart to heart about loving killers. Uh, that was a big moment for me. I think the ending of just we don't know who's alive or who's dead. That was a big moment. And then trust being trust and attempting to sabotage Arc 15, but in fact sabotaging and blowing up an entire planet instead as my big three moments good moments yeah. um i think that yes cliffhanger ending planet blowing up mm-hmm. huge wow moment yeah um trust betraying everyone not a wow moment uh oh, oh, moment like of course right of course of course moment yeah like ugh. maddox slapping kelly was a wow <laughs> Like I didn't ex- when she you like, didn't think she was slapper when she snuck on. I thought she would be mad. I did not see her hitting her. That was a surprise. There's still so much to break down in the season finale. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Let's discuss the finale because Lane has just sacrificed himself. He is protecting uh, our crew. And he then has this, like, badass, like, spy sequence um, where he fights off the three guards and then he sees the, like, hallway full of guards and then they double. And then he goes into the engine room oh, um, to beat the crap oh, out of yeah, the FDL yeah, machine. Yeah. But he claims he fights five guys. There's or ten guys. There's one guy. Yeah. Engine room secure. Good work. How many were there? Oh, about ten. <laughs> but that was fun. They had that FTL drive um, box and they just, they basically handed me a crowbar and said, just Go smash it to bits. I said, I, I said to them, how many of them do we have? Because I knew that, that one, there wouldn't be many of them. And if something happened or, you know, we couldn't do it again. And I think they said two. Oh. I think they only had two. So we did the first one. I'm smashing into this thing. And, uh, yeah, it was like therapy, basically, you know, just completely destroying this metal box. And I hit it. And I, the second time I hit it, it just jumped up in the air. So it stuck it down, but it wasn't stuck down properly. And it just jumped up in the air and just disappeared. <laughs> and they were like, OK, we can't use that anymore. So bring in the other one. And I knew that this was our last shot at getting this thing. And so they really stuck it down and made sure it wasn't going to move anywhere. And I think one of the cables had fallen out on the other one as well. <laughs> and this one just stayed there. And I just... I just went to town on it. Yeah, it was great. Good fun. Yeah. We um, get paid for that. I mean, we get paid. <laughs> Someone gives you a crowbar and says, bash that up and I'll pay you. It's like, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you know, you this season you dealt with your, your head on fire and um, and not being able to hear your colleagues. Yeah. Um, 
And then sometimes you get to sleep and sometimes you get to bash things. Yeah, and locked in a room of trust for about a month. Right. You know, very small room. We were in there a lot. Really? Um, yeah, a lot. Um, so, yeah, it was... I mean, we all had our challenges, didn't we? It was, we all had our things, man. It's me and the blue glove on it. Yeah, he had a blue glove on like three for episodes. like three episodes. That, you know, when he got his hand um, with the crystals, he got his right. hand. It doesn't sound much when you say it, but that's like five weeks <laughs> And you're, you've got to eat between thing, scenes and, and stuff. Like and all day with this. Yeah. Guy, so, oh, man. <laughs> and they'd be like, "What?" And we'd be like, "We're picking up a scene from episode three. And the blue seems, glove. Yeah. And the very final, the very final. So I've, this blue glove haunted me for like months. And then the very, very final shot that we hadn't done of the whole series was that shot from episode three when I jumped down into the hatch to go to the shuttle for the first time. That was the very final shot that we did of the whole series. And so I've just walked off set for like. And a scene we did in episode 12 and they went we're going for the final shot of the whole thing and everyone very kindly came into the thing and it was all very lovely and then they went get the blue glove and I went are you joking and we all just we just roared it was the funniest moment because he thought to, he was done like, and, and there's I have a picture I took the blue glove because it, it was in perfect form but he found a way to slip it off so he could use his hands and I just placed it on his chair for when he came back from set and it was just there upright the, the mould of his hand in this, this thing it became a character it was it was like yeah yeah, but Did we you all take it home. Do you no, have it? Where is it? Burnt he burnt it. it. Burnt it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, speaking of your hands, uh, in the finale, we have to cure clampkins, mm. and we do this by sticking your hand in a jar of spiders. Nice yeah. link. Um, yeah, that was nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I do this. Yeah. This is what I do for a yeah. living. Um, <laughs> I so we stick your hand in a jar of glo- of spiders. Yeah. Um, now I know that the spiders weren't there. Yes. But your performance, I saw spiders. I'm looking at green dots and I saw spiders <laughs> because of your performance. And then we got to see your hand covered in spider bites. Yeah. Um, what was it like? Did you know there weren't going to be spiders or did you think you were going to be playing with spiders that day? I assumed <laughs> that there wouldn't be spiders. Um, because that would be kind of nuts. Someone did try and wind me up. In fact, we played. I started playing pranks on people. So what they had. Oh really? This is all coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all. Yeah. So this is all coming back to me now. So we had a couple of actresses who were really afraid Actual of spiders. Yeah. Maddox. And, um, yeah. So I. So what they did was they had a couple of real spiders in the box for like eye line and stuff, but the rest were all going to be CGI. So I took the fake ones and just just you know when like someone's afraid of something and it's been spoken about all day and then I'm acting with it and it's just it was just alive in the room that there was like the, the word spider was ever present and I just at some point just came and Placed I was it on her shoulder. slipping them on my shoulders oh, you've never seen someone scream so much it was absolutely brilliant we yeah. should have got that on film actually that yeah been. but um, no it, 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 there was there were no spiders but I, I, I'm glad you believed there was uh, we also you know with this cure I feel like Ever since we've revealed that Bryce had clampkins mm. through this moment where he's cured and he and Ava have this like really touching moment, he's grown into a person. Because up until I think we reveal that he has clampkins, he's been a, a Ken doll. You, you're very right. That's that's exactly what it is, and that was in the writing. Like he more than probably anyone for the first few episodes, he's so. Um, almost like abnormally just mission driven everything's mission driven bravado if it's not like i'll put my hand up and go and risk my life for this thing it's i'm going to make some sarcastic remark that's totally not in keeping with the seriousness of the situation so that was it's a little bit ajar it's only when you get the final the missing piece of the reason he's covering up all of this pain and all of this anxiety and all of this thing that he's dealing with with joking or making remarks or um, just jumping into the line of fire it's only when there's something more than that that brings him out of the shell which is his newfound feelings for Ava which is the sort of missing link that as you say makes him become slightly more human and deal with all of the darkness that's bubbling away underneath but that was was, was lovely to play because it, it kind of his journey is very much in two separate parts you know it's sort of pre-Ava and, and post-Ava yeah and then once he's cured you know and he's He's crying and he's he's so happy. It just it really added more layers to this character. That the whole intent with playing a character like that is is def- 
defending oneself right and and he's got a real i mean bryce is that quintessential guy it's like like the cool hand luke kind of guy you know the the paul newman paul mm -hmm. newman um you know where he is that guy who you think is untouchable mm -hmm. and then what richard does brilliantly is he peels back the layers of the onion and shows that he's actually one of the most vulnerable and a lot of the people we meet in life they are that that way the, the ones that are the most kind of like everything's fine everything's going to be okay are actually like that because they've they've got an inner fear of right. some you know they're projecting this strength because of their inner fear so and it transpires that he's going to die you know whereas like lane is kind of like i think that's why they they identify with one another they're so different mm. but lane is kind of the opposite really in many ways he wears his on the on the outside right you know? yeah he, she, he voices his concerns which you could argue is kind of honest even though they're not always just mm. you know yeah well it has been a pleasure talking to you today and getting to know these characters this season thanks for yeah. having us you thank too. you so yeah, much for joining great. me let's talk about the end of the season um we are wrapping it up we're on a cliffhanger um, yeah. of sorts what a cliffhanger what a cliffhanger uh will who will survive what will happen next do you have any predictions or thoughts uh, as a fan oh. just as a fan i have no idea <laughs> what will happen genuinely predictions i love arc one i hope like it's not as bad as we think it is you know i hope we can like salvage it i secretly hope this is going to be so maniacal but i secretly hope like kelly comes back and like murders her mother and becomes the ultimate villain like i just want i mean samantha who plays kelly she does such an incredible job i would hate for her to not be brought back you know and i think it would be so rad to see her like kill her mom i feel like that's the ultimate villain move you know where she just takes over and is like i hate these people and like kills her mom um so that's like <laughs> secretly i i love when like maniacal things like that happen um what I love about the finale is that I feel like you see Lane and Garnett, like, versus the beginning of our show to the end of our show, there's a switch, right? Whereas, like, in the first episode, I'm the one who's like, we got to do this, we got to do that. And Lane's kind of like, whoa, I'm just waking up, what's going on? And then you see the opposite happen in episode 12, where Lane's more kind of in control and Garnett's kind of, now that she cares... Is kind of like, well, uh, I don't know what I'm doing, and is like too emotional almost. I like the idea of um, Kelly wa waking up from her coma and taking over her yeah. mom because her Maddox is like, she changed in the finale. Yeah. All of a sudden, she's like, we can be friends. I'm going to help yeah, you. Yeah, and she's not that evil. I want like the ultimate villain, you know? It's so funny that you say that because originally my thought was Kelly wakes up and is a completely like different person mm. and is nicer now. Oh. Like, because she, you know, brain injury. She's a different person now. She's all oh. nice. But your way is so much more interesting. I just think it would be, I don't know, I think it would be so interesting if she like woke up and like, you know, became Darth Vader or something. <laughs> That would be so cool. Um, other predictions. Only I know... think Angus and Alicia. I think something's going to happen. <laughs> I want them to get together. I think that would, they're like the cute relationship, you know? It'd be cool if there was like a wedding next season, if we do get another season. You know, Bryce and Ava having a wedding. Um, I hope Richard has such an amazing, who plays Bryce, has such an amazing singing voice. I hope he gets to sing in an episode. We end this this season with just be we have eyes on um, Alicia, Bryce, Lane, and Garnett. Bridge crew. Yeah. Angus is not among them. Let me tell you, if Ryan Adams doesn't come back, <laughs> murdering people. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. I love him. I love everybody. Denise um, has come out. Oh, Denise. <laughs> Get back in your cage. Um, I hope they all come back, but I mean, I feel like some people got to die. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't I don't write this stuff. Any other uh, stories or episode things you want to share while we have you? But just laughing with everybody. I think I had such a great time filming with everybody everyone like we really became a family over there and so yeah i hope we get to do it again i had so much fun i love every single person 
Yeah, I don't really have any stories. I'm trying to think. Stories. Well, the opening of the pilot was the first thing we shot. And I remember Dean being like, we're doing this, we're doing that. And he was like amazing. And I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, And everyone was kind of like, I felt like we weren't acting. We were like, it's a catastrophe. (laughs) No, it truly is a catastrophe. Um, Well, that's a great way to capture the anxiety of that moment. Totally, totally. And we would like constantly pinch ourselves being like, are we literally living out our five-year-old dreams right now? Like, is somebody actually paying us to like do this? And then the only other scene that I remember being like so excited for was in episode 10 um, when the people are coming and we do that mission and I'm like looking and I'm like, they're coming. I guess that means whatever, they don't come in peace or whatever. It's like, the, I think the first time you see Garnett trying to be like Bryce, like yes. trying to be funny. So much fun. I remember we were doing the blocking and I was like, oh, do you think I could like roll on the ground <laughs> and then like, you know, hit the thing? And they were like, no, let's take it down a notch. Like I was literally trying to see how far they'd let me push it. But seriously, it was like rolling around the ground, like laughing hysterically. And I remember Richard looking at me just like n- could not stop laughing. He was like, oh, my God, who, who are you? Um, yeah, so fun. <laughs> They're wearing body armor and carrying automatic weapons, so clearly they do not come in peace. You think? Uh, I'm very lucky. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us. No, about thank the arc. you oh. so much. You're for welcome. Chatting with me about the arc. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> no, thank you for coming in. <laughs> I just secretly want to take your job. Go ahead. Tell tell them we're going to commercial. Where do I look? Th- that's you. That, that one. one. Yeah, we're going to commercial. let's talk about this season finale episode 12 yeah it's a wild episode 12 for for kelly there was a little bit of strategy in the last few episodes you know she was Mm -hmm. she was calculating her actions but i think episode 12 she's just like i'm pissed off and i'm gonna go let my feelings out how i choose to do that even if it is not a smart decision she made one calculated move that i was very impressed with um, which is, and it felt very strategic, which was when her mom was dealing with the spiders um, and she faked that she was feeling sick and then attacked yes, the Yes, that's true. Okay. Yes. Clever, clever move. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because she uses the strategy to get to the thing that is horribly stupid to do. That was such a fun scene to film, by the way, with yeah. Kelly and Cliff, our little like scuffle in the hallway. Um, we just had so much fun with it. It was an awesome scene. Um, you get to do like little fights here and there. Yeah, I do. And there's so much fun. There's so much fun. Um, yeah, something that I've never really had the opportunity to do. So, um, having that on this show has been incredible. Um, yeah. Tell me about, uh, shooting that. It's just fun it was a lot of it was like choreographed in the moment like what can we do here with this weapon when should we drop it where's my foot gonna go when we turn like a lot of that kind of stuff it was almost just like choreographing a dance I guess that's how my brain works because I used to be a dancer so I'm like okay it's like dance choreography so what is your favorite version of Kelly is it powerful is it uh emotional like really vulnerable her mom's dying Or is it, um, you know, kick-ass fighting, manipulating? Well, I think like the kick-ass fighting, manipulating was like the most fun for me as an actor. I felt so lucky to get to play a character like this because there really are so many different sides of her that you get to see throughout the show. So it was fun for me to kind of evolve the character as the show went on. You know, episode seven, she's sweet and innocent and like, you know, she's covered in like dirt and sweat and she's in like, you know, her arm is injured and you look at her and she kind of just screams like poor lost victim whose best friend died. And then you get on kind of further and then eight and nine, she's like kind of like seducing Angus and you're like, okay, she's got like a bit of a like romantic side to her. What's going, what is this? And then it kind of transforms into like more manipulation and then like aggressive violence so getting to kind of like play all of that out and then we have that little break in 11 where it's like let's take a break from all the crazy let's show why she's like this 
and you get to see like a vulnerable version of her. She's not just like this crazy villain. Um, you get to see her cry. You get to see like, okay, this is where this person comes from. This is why she is the way she is. Um, and look, she does have feelings. Um, so I think all of that was just like, I don't know that I would have a favorite version. I think that I just felt really excited and really lucky to get to kind of explore so many different sides of one character. Absolutely. Um, and we end with her in a coma. Uh, yes. sh assuming she comes out of the coma, do you think she comes out of the coma and she is worse than ever? Or do you think she comes out of the coma and she is a completely different person? I feel like it could go either way. Right? I don't know. I, I would be so curious to see, like more than anything, how her relationship with her mom changes or doesn't change if she were to come out of the coma. Because I see a world in which she kind of, you know, is like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be blindly following you. Hmm, how do I really feel about this and everything you've done? I think that would be interesting, but I could also see her waking up and being like, revenge, let me kill people. But I think it's worth noting, right, that like Maddox took Kelly's body back and was like, we have doctors who can handle this. So she didn't just leave her there to die, yeah. which I think is like a very minor thing. When you No, it's important it's though. It's important for them. Like that's a big yeah. step for her. It's important that to some extent she cares because mm -hmm. there could have been, you know, an alternate world where she just was like, well, well, that sucks. You know, and like nothing more like she was in my way. She was messing stuff up for me. Maybe it's for the best. But like instead we see her like actually care. And like she goes, there's that scene where she like goes into the hospital and like visits Kelly while she's kind of in a coma, like looks at her and it's like, we'll take her to arc 15 and all of that. So it's like, you do see that she cares about her kid. Mm -hmm. um, she's clearly an awful parent. But there is some sense of like, this is my daughter and I like do want her to be okay. And I am upset that these people hurt her. I am sitting down with the writer of the season finale titled Everybody Wins. We have John Paul Nickel. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, tell me about this finale because I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's a lot of pressure to write the season finale. Yes. And I didn't know I was writing it at first. <laughs> I see. <laughs> um, it just kind of happened with the timeline and how the rotations of writers writing episodes went. And Jonathan was going uh, to Serbia to direct it. So he said, I, I, I don't have the, the, the time right now because we're doing this and I'm going to direct. So uh, I think had Jonathan not been directing it, I'm sh everyone just assumed Jonathan was going to write it. But the fact is he's directing it. So we, you know, he's, going to be tweaking and making changes for production drafts and what he needs to do on set. So I just feel honored that he that he trusted me to sort of move the ball to like, you, you know, the 10 the yard line. Um, if I can use a sport ball reference about a nerd show. Going into the finale, you know, this is the big ending of the season and there's a big cliffhanger. Yes. Um, but also a lot of the big mysteries and stories that we've been unfolding through the season is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. um, how much did you know, like, OK, I have to hit these things or or I have to make sure we get to this point? What an excellent question. <laughs> we always knew we were steering our ship, so to speak, towards the idea of we would get to Proxima B and for one reason or another it was not going to be inhabitable. Um, and we always knew that we were going to come across Arc 15 that was going to be an antagonist to us. And, and and you know, they were just kind of going to come down to this point. How it was all going to suss out, we always knew that we would not be able to settle on the planet because we can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we always knew we would not be able to settle on the planet and that we would have to end with for one reason or another, us, us leaving the planet, um, whether it was destroyed. So was it your decision to blow it up? Mine personally? Yes. We went through so many iterations of what could happen. Right. Um, 
and eventually and I, and I don't want to talk about too many of them because there were some really good ideas in there that could come up in future seasons mm-hmm. um but I don't remember if it was specifically <laughs> my idea but we needed to do we knew we needed to do something like that mm-hmm. we know we knew we needed a cliffhanger we knew we we wanted like you said a, a, resolve a lot of these emotional arcs tie up some of these mysteries but still leave a cliffhanger so that you know people know there's there's more story to tell um you know as opposed to just tying it up neatly in a bow which was you know one option we could have done but right yeah um i love that it's a cliffhanger um and that you know there are still lots of questions still available Um, Some of which are who lives and who dies. Because you'll notice in the last couple scenes, you don't see some people. Yeah. No, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. I have Mm -hmm. already shared my list of demands of who lives. (laughs) Um, I think it's everybody. I think nobody's allowed to die. We want them all to live. Yeah. But we don't always get what we want in life. (laughs) I hate you right now. (laughs) Um, Do you have a favorite moment from the finale? I mean, aside from I mean, blowing up a planet. Aside from blowing up, actually, I I I really love trust in this episode, and his and this idea of he just can't swallow his pride, and and also this very human idea of she is ultimately responsible for the murder of my wife. I will never forgive. She took my company. I can deal with that. You know, I had to hide for. I can deal with that. She killed Arc Three, sure, whatever. But she killed my wife. She killed the love of my life, and I may have had a complicated relationship with her, but she was my wife. I will never forgive her for that, and everybody on there is culpable. And and this idea that he is so blind that he really thinks on some level the crew of Arc 1 will be thanking him. That's where the title Everybody Wins comes. And his speech kind of, you know, it, it changed a lot in various drafts, but the, the core of that speech is, you should be thanking me. We are getting rid of this cancerous person. I'm giving you utopia. I've brought you to the promised land. Everybody's going to win. Where is the downside? And of course, it's our heroes who who have ethical, moral boundaries are like, well, no, not everybody wins. A lot of people are going to die for this, which is, you know, what what makes him an interesting character and what makes our heroes so, so awesome and compassionate. And, you know, that's the ship you'd want to be on, right? Do you want to be on the ship that's led by kind, caring people, even though it's breaking down a lot and we've got trouble <laughs> or do you want to be on the ship that's led by uh, a sociopath and an evil person that that you know who on arc 15 who knows what's going on over there <laughs> yeah. I, I want to talk about the way that the the season kind of ends for ava and bryce do you think that she uh is is doing better now right she's lost so many people but somebody survived yeah exactly i mean that that was the investment that she made and uh, she couldn't handle losing another human being. And, but I don't think that she was always aware of that. That's why he, he was telling, he was trying to tell her that from time to time. So she had to just give it all in, try to save him. The bond was made Mm -hmm. and they couldn't really erase it that easily. Yeah. Um, I feel like they are, they, look, they weren't the couple I shipped in the beginning, but they're together and I'm okay with it and I see it and I get it and I support it. And now I ship them and now nothing can tear them apart because I'll be very upset about it. <laughs> I really, honestly, I didn't, I did not expect the two of them being together, uh, but it was really funny and we joke, we kind of had a joke around like, okay, so Harris died and two episodes after <laughs> I something mean, time you know you're on a ship time is irrelevant yeah but it was funny it was funny and um but yeah later on i mean some of the best scenes i've done were probably with with richard between neva and bryce oh yeah do you have a favorite no i i don't think i i don't think i can say only one scene I mean, there's there's so many, and I honestly enjoyed this project so much because of that, because it was so much fun. The running, the jumping, the fixing, the the welding. 
<laughs> I've never done that. Uh, the whole romance thing and how they were, how it was building up. Everything was really, really, really special for me. Is there any um, specific scene or moment that you uh, want to make sure we touch on that you are, you know, that you reflect fondly on? I love the welding scene. We had so much fun shooting it. Um, especially, I mean, Gertnett uh, was really, really a badass at that moment. And, uh, and then Bryce and Ava, and we really gave our best for it. And we had so much fun shooting it. What was fun about shooting welding? I actually welded. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm actually welding. So uh, uh, Ava does a lot. She always fixes something. And when I read about welding, I was like, you have to actually let me do it. I really want to try and just weld something. So they actually uh, gave me a chance to <laughs> to weld something. And it was really fun the, at, at the moment because I was wearing the glasses and I've never done it before. So I didn't know that when you're welding, you don't see anything through the glasses, but the fire. So at the moment, I... <laughs> I, I asked everybody else, like, did somebody turn off the lights? Because it's really, it's dark. I can't see anything but but the fire. And they were like, that's how the glasses work. <laughs> so, and I had to run out of the, of the scene. So it was kind of a challenging moment where I have to, like, run in the, in the dark. So, yeah, it was, that was really special <laughs> that's amazing are you now welding things at home do you have all this welding sculptures you're doing no i would love to but no <laughs> this is your new hobby that you picked up from the show yeah <laughs> the new skill <laughs> i love it um the moment when we actually find out that the price is cured mm -hmm. was emotional and because of few things it was the last shooting day oh wow and yeah it was the last shooting day and we were we were crying a lot i have to say i mean i i can say that for myself if uh, nobody else <laughs> wants to admit that <laughs> but i was crying a lot um because it was a really special journey and i shared it like with the most amazing cast members and the crew um so yeah, it was, it was actually so emotional. And I love that that was the last scene that we done. This is the season one finale. I'm sitting down with showrunner and executive producer and all around great guy, Jonathan Glasner. Hello. Hello. Okay, first of all, how do you decide or did you know from the get, which has been my theme all season long, where you were going to end and what cliffhangers you were going to leave? Uh, yes and no. Okay. We um, originally ended the show a little darker oh. than we did. And the network rightfully said, we think there needs to be a little more hope. <laughs> okay. And th the hope that we added of, of the ship coming, of uh, Maddox's ship coming... Mm -hmm was always in our head that that's how we would start next season. We just pulled it forward okay. to this season to show that there's a chance. And it, you know, to their credit, it's much better that way because it also pays off Garnett's whole whole thing in the whole series of, you know, people have to be given the chance to do the right thing, basically. Absolutely. Yeah. When you think about the season as a whole, and I guess the series as a whole, do you have multiple season ideas planned out or general um very broadly yeah very broadly i don't i don't like to think um of detailed five season because you don't know where the characters are going to take you mm. you know as you cast it and play with it and write a bunch of scripts things come up about the characters that are much more interesting than what you had planned, you know? Right. So I'm not a big believer in in 
uh, you know, we know the ultimate ending, but how we get to that ending, we'll see. Okay. And also, as Dean likes to say, we're hoping, you know, there's going to be 18, 18 seasons. So right. can't really plan that far ahead. I mean, you can. <laughs> In 18 seasons, they've all had lots of children that are all adults now. <laughs> That's true, yeah. It moves on. It spins off to Ark Jr. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I wonder how many stories, you know, if you know that season one we want to get from everybody wakes up, this is who's alive, to now we are getting saved by Ark 15, um, Ark 3 is dead, their arc two is dead. There are other arcs potentially somewhere out there. How many stories that you've essentially used in these seasons are you were you planning to use elsewhere? And you were like, well, let's bring that up earlier. I don't think there were any that we brought up except for the, like I said, at the yeah. end of the episode, we pulled up the very beginning of the next episode if we get, if we're fortunate enough to get a next episode. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I want to, we have some questions still from this season, and I want to see if we can answer them. Who pulled the strings to get Garnett on the ship? Was it Dr. Hall? Yes. Okay. Do we get, is there an answer to why he pulled the strings to get her on the ship? Well, like she said, he he was the closest thing she had to a dad. Mm-hmm. And he cared about her, and it was a way to further his research by having her there to see what happens. Okay. Right. So, yeah, he, it was definitely him. Okay, so there isn't any other sinister... No, okay. not in that case. All right. Um, so, Ava and Bryce, they're staying together? I don't know. As of the end of the first At the season. end of the show, they're together, yeah. All right, the end of the season, yeah. they're together. The season, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, will, will Kelly survive her coma? Don't know yet. My daughter keeps asking me the same question. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah. Because she's on ARC 15. Yeah. And they seem to have more doctors than just Dr. Kabir. That's true. And and more advanced medical yes. technology. Right. Um, is trust alive? Well, I'll never tell. <laughs> His right. wife's not. Yes. That I know. <laughs> Thank you. Um. Will Cat get over him? I'll never tell. <laughs> okay. Uh, don't you feel like she's uh, over him already by the end of it, of this of this season? Yeah, but you know, healing takes time, and I assume that something will remind her. And no, she's done. She's... I think a better question is: Is he over her? Does Trust even care about the women he's with? <laughs> Oh, I think he really cared about Helena, his wife. Right. <laughs> but not Cat, the Cat, I'm not sure. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he's over her. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So, as you say, we end the season, we see um, Alicia and the three lieutenants on the bridge. So I'm going to ask, is Angus alive? I don't know. Is Dr. Kabir alive? I don't know. All right. I know, but I'm not going to say. Okay, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Because you keep killing people off. Yes. I mean, Dean and I both have the philosophy that if nobody can die, there's no threat or suspense. Sure. And so we characters die on our shows. Mm-hmm. I mean, on, on The Outpost, we killed a lot of people. Yeah, but it's The just... Outpost had like a, a whole world to pull people from. Yeah. Well, we've got two ships to pull people from. Yeah. Now. Mm-hmm. A ship and a half. Yeah. <laughs> ship and a yeah. half. Um, okay. Um, this is something that's been driving me crazy the whole season. What's the deal with the Juno project? Is it is it eugenics? Basically, yeah. And now what? Is is the Juno project essentially dead? Well, We'll see. Um, it, it would have been dead if Arc 1 was the only Arc, because there weren't enough people. But now that there's another Arc, we'll see. Who would take, uh, I guess, leadership? Who would take command of the Juno Project? Should they... Well, who would, who would take command of everything? That's, that's the bigger question. 
Maddox or Garnett or who? Mm. So many questions. Mm -hmm. Was was Maddox aware of the Juno project? Because that feels like it was a trust and cat secret project. Yes, yeah, she was. Oh. Yeah, she was. Okay. I think she was. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um. All right. Is there any storyline this season that was specifically challenging or the most fun to write? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It was all hard. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it was it's, it was fun. Right. But it was hard. I mean, it was it's a giant jigsaw puzzle, and to get everything to land right, you know, is always a challenge. Mm -hmm. Things always, you know, you can't you can't figure out how to pay them off and you know I think we pulled it all off but it was hard but it's there's no one area that's more fun than the others okay there are areas that I like less but I won't talk about that <laughs> but all there's right. a most of the show it's all one one great piece of fun for me I'm as a viewer I agree um do you like puzzles are you like a big puzzle maker? no not at all <laughs> puzzles are hard for me okay my uh, my family all play do jigsaw puzzles and I stand and look at it and walk away usually <laughs> I get that I'm, I'm very similar I get frustrated very quickly yeah you, you've seen me I'm impatient I want the answers <laughs> that's how I am <laughs> amazing uh, thank you so much for talking to us um, and no for telling problem. us all of the secrets and none of them at all We're posting photos from the ARC on our Instagram every week, and we want to see you caption them with clever comments. If we like what you have to say, we might feature it here on the show. Thank you so much for joining us all season long as we've talked about the arc here on After the Arc. Yes, and if you want to keep the conversation going before season two, give us a follow on Instagram at After the Arc. We can't wait to see you next season. Until then, I'm Yael Teagle. I'm Adrian Snow. See you later. <laughs>